Okay, <clears throat> this is unit three, day, unit 13, day three notes. And this is almost going to be a repeat of yesterday's notes because this is just the same thing when we're talking about pyramids and cones. What's the difference? Well, pyramids and cones only have one base instead of two bases. And their lateral sides are all triangles. So again, we have to find the base on each one of these, just like we did in the last unit. And then we're going to mark the height in each one of them. And the height goes perpendicular to the base, just like it did in the prisms. And it always goes up to this point called the vertex. So the height is always perpendicular, and it always goes straight up to the vertex. Then in these, we also have one extra thing called the slant height. The slant height is always the slanty part along one of the sides going up from the side like this. So I'm going to mark this in another color here. And I'm going to mark it like that. So in each one of these, we now have a height and a slant height. And we have to find the base. So we use L for the slant height. I don't know why they use L for the slant height, but they do. L is the slant height. Okay, and let's write our formulas down again. We're just writing them right off of our green sheet. So I'm just going to copy them right off of here from the green sheet. You'll notice that the difference here is it's one half because triangles are one half base times height. That's why this is one half here. And then we only have one B that we're adding because these only have one base when we're doing the areas. Then down here, the volume is one third the base times the height. So I'm going to write these formulas in just so that we have them on our notes. Uh, the pyramid, one-half PL, notice that's the slant height, uh, one-half PL plus one base. And then the volume uses one-third base times the height. So those are L, this is H, so we need both of them. For the cone, we see the similar thing, pi RL, pi RL plus pi R squared, and one-third <coughs> base times height. So it is important that we keep the L's and the H's separate. So just like we did on the prisms and cones, I'm going to have us highlight the base on each problem so we can easily figure out what the base is because we still need to find the perimeter and the big B. And then I'm going to mark the height on each one, and I'm going to mark the slant height on each one. So, and then here's one of the things that makes these a little trickier sometimes is sometimes I don't know all these things. Like on this one, I know the height, but they didn't tell me the slant height. And I have to look in here at what does this make right there. That makes a right triangle where this part is the pink one. That's the pink one, so that's 10. This part is going across the yellow part, and it's how long? Well, the whole side is 8, so that part is 4. And then I want to find this green part that's the slant height. Well, this is a right triangle, so I can use Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to do that. Four squared plus 10 squared. I get 116 equals c squared. When I plug that in my calculator, I take the square root, and I get that this green side is 10.77. That is the slant height. Then the perimeter of the base, 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 32. And the area of the base, the base is a square, so it's 8 times 8 is 64. Now, once again, getting this set up correctly, that's literally the hardest part of the whole problem. This part is just plugging it into these formulas that I had up here. 1 half PL, 1 half PL plus B, 1 third base times height. Really, you can't mess this up unless you're just, you just copy down the formulas wrong or you plug in the wrong number. Because we have all the numbers written down right here we're going to plug in. So this is 1 half, P is 32. L is 10.77, very carefully type it in your calculator, and you get 172.32. Next one, this part is exactly the same as up there. 
and the base we found was 64. Plug that in my calculator very carefully, 236.32. Next one, one third, base is 64, and this time they want H, which is 10. Just have to be careful getting the right numbers to plug in here, 213.33. Okay, this next one, same idea, but now the base is a triangle, so I have to use the triangle when I'm figuring out big B. <clears throat> this one, they were really nice, and they gave us both H and L. H is 10, and L is 11.662. One note is L is always going to be bigger <laughs> than, than, than H because it's slanted, so it's always the hypotenuse of the triangle here, so L will always be bigger than H, kind of a hint. Okay, the perimeter of the base, well, let's see, this is 12, 12, 12, so that's 36. In the area of the base, it's a triangle, one-half base times height. The base of the triangle is 12, and the height of the triangle is this one right here, 10.392 plug that into my calculator and I get the base is 62.352. Now, once again, once I have that done, that's the hardest part. Now I just plug them in the formulas. 1 half PL, 1 half PL plus B, 1 third BH. Plug them in from up here. 1 half, 36, 11.662. And plug that in your calculator, we get 209.916. Do it here. This part is exactly the same as that. And then B is right there, 62.352. Um, and you get 272.268. And then one third base is this. And height is this. And just as a side note, I haven't said it, but you really should be writing down this much on the problems. If you try to type it right in your calculator, you're likely to make mistakes, and you won't know where you made your mistake because you didn't write it down. You should write all these steps down so you know what you're typing in. It'll help you find mistakes if you make any.